Welcome back. This is Captain Lee, and I'm currently pointing at a seven pound weight on my light setup. This rope is three eighths inch thick foam core. You can buy it at any big box retail. And I take 17 foot because I lose a foot at each end. This is a 120 pound long line clip. A 140 pound is too difficult for me to squeeze. There's about six inches between the spring relief to your left and the one inch stainless steel ring holding my clip and rope to the white. This is the bull nose. You want to get 5 16 or 3 8 inch bull nose. The formula is depth minus 8. If I'm at 11 foot of water, eight, 11 minus 8 is 3. I count back 3 feet on my rope and I clip off. This will ensure in 11 foot of water that my light is in the pocket the perfect part of the water column where I have plenty of black water above the light. You can clip this two ways. Notice once it's clipped the light can't float any closer to the surface because of the deployed weight. That's a perfect set. Now I'm going to show you the particulars about the kind of lights that I like. I like the green and white 120 degree directional LED. Always have a floating device on your light. You never know when your light will go overboard. This is a green and white light. I bought it from Marker 69. This is my customized box. These are supposedly airplane connectors, gold pin, and they haven't corroded yet. I have two switches. I can turn on my green. I can turn on my white. I can turn on my green and white at the same time. My most favorite configuration. This switch box has three ports. Let me show you. Those are gold pins, and these are very expensive, supposedly airplane connectors. And the box attaches to my battery, a simple single positive and single negative. The number one problem that I see in tidal waters is boaters have their lights way too close to the surface. The concept you must understand is there must be space between the top of your light and the top of the water column. I call this area between the two black water. Shrimp do not like light, the brown and pink species particularly, which is the ones we are chasing. The white ones in the summer do. When we deploy our lights, and they are too high in the water column or if you did not allow for the tide to fall during the outgoing the shrimp will be forced to go to the darkest part which will be below the light and they will swim under your boat if you do not see that in your mind the shrimp run is over when in fact it was just over for you Notice the amount of black water above the light. The more black water above the light, the more shrimp will come through. Typically, these LED two color lights have a cone intensity of about five foot thick. We call that the cone of light. There's no light below that cone. There's no light above it. And this is the space the black water we create allowing the shrimp to go to the darkest part when they're swimming through. Shrimp will not swim through intense light. They will mark the light from a distance. They will start ascending in a climb till they get to a comfortable part of your light field and then they will continue to swim. You see them, 
they don't see you because they're in black water above the cone of light. And you saw them because it blacklit them as dark objects. This is a perfect kill zone. The light is sunk as deep as possible where you still can see what's coming through. I do a three light set and I talk about that in the earlier parts of the seminar. You don't want your lights too close to the boat. It becomes visually restricting and the more green area you can see the more shrimp you will see passing through. But always make sure the green circle of light grazes your boat because if you leave any dark area you will lose them at the last seconds and will be unable to dip them. This is a perfect light set. Notice this light is floating vertical. The light actually shines away. It does not shine straight up to the water column, which if you created a wall of light or curtain of light to the top, the shrimp cannot go through it and will go below it. This is what and why we use LED lights that have end caps on both sides. In an aerial view, this is a perfect light field. Notice the two circles of light are overlapping. If you leave any dark area down the center, they will source that and they will get out of sight and disappear. A problem that I see commonly are people that just hang their light straight down. You're very limited in your visuals where you can scan and you might miss a few because they came at you so quickly you didn't have a chance to respond. The trick? Throw your lights out, grab your cord, pull them in until they graze your hull. I want your area out in front totally lit. Do not create dark areas down the center unless you're intending on deploying a frame net behind you on a center cleat. Let's talk about the herding strategy. This is what I do not want to see. A dark path of water between your first and your second light. Notice these lights are set evenly. How do you know if they're set evenly under the water? The shrimp are coming at you in a straight line. If you create this dark water you will not be able to see the shrimp and they will go from this side or this side into that dark area where they will be lost. The only time you open up your light field and create this is when you want to deploy a frame net. But we're not quite there yet. How do we change the flow of shrimp? In this illustration, we have a small dark area, very limited, but acceptable. The right light is out further than the left light. This will shift the flow. You can't help but get a small dark area when you set one light out further than the other. You can experiment so that you still can create some dark water, but still have visuals in it. Why do we want to change the shrimp flow? In this case, with the right light out, it's going to shift the flow towards the bow. The bow is facing the houses in a horizontal set. The engine is facing the ocean. Sometimes we have inexperienced people on our boat. And the worst nightmare for us would be the lion's share going to that person. I hear it often. When people tell me their reports, they'll make a notation that their partner had all the action. That was a shame. To get a full pull, 
both need to be productive. If only one person is dipping, stop and assess. That's a symptom of a lighting problem. You should be dipping sock for sock. No one person should have more action. Should this happen, one of your lights has gone out further than the other. Pull on the cord and correct it immediately. Stern herding is the opposite of bow herding. The left light now is out further than the right light. This will sh shift the flow towards the engine. Again, it is a great trick when you have an inexperienced boater and you want to make sure the most experienced person gets the majority. P.S. It also saves marriages and hurt feelings. No one will ever know you did this. Earlier I talked about when you open a wider path. You have a dipper by your stern that's enjoying this light field. You have a dipper at the bow enjoying this light field. Create some space here where you're willing to have some dead loss in there. In other words, that you allow this rim to disappear into this dark path. The current will push them under your boat and into a waiting frame net on a center cleat behind you. You are standing here and you're facing this direction. The shrimp flow in tidal waters in the direction of the current. All of these diagrams that I am showing you are for tidal waters. If you are in Brevard, railroad bridge, haul over, those are the rare exceptions where it is okay to attach your lights to your anchor lines at haul over. Deploying a light to the bottom guarantees you a snag and a potential loss of light. Different parts of Brevard, to include Railroad Bridge, those are not tidal waters. Those are wind-driven. When you are shrimping in wind-driven, the strategy would be using more than two lights. Everything I just said to you was based on being in tidal waters. Should you be in wind-driven conditions, it would be best to put a light at the bow, the center, the stern, and the opposite side. Because when the shrimp are wind driven, they don't come in any one particular direction. So it would be wise to set a circumference of lights, but do not create a situation where your lights are too high in the water. You must have black water whether you're in tidal or wind driven. This is a three light deployment. Follow me here. My left light is a calculated depth. I talked about this earlier. At the beginning of the video I showed you how I do that. I take a formula, depth minus 8. If I am in 11 foot of water, I subtract 8 and the answer is 3. I touch my weight, I count back 3, and I clip off my rope. That is now my 9 p.m. light. I will also do that same to my right. Even though I have a 17 foot boat, the depth between the right light and the left light are going to be different. So you have to set each light based on the architecture of the bottom and depth on each side. The center light is a little more faded in this illustration. What that means is it's a sacrificial light. I put that as close to the bottom as I can without cracking the LED housing with my weight. What that does is it helps blow up the big fat ones that are walking on the bottom, buried in the mud, or passing through at a much lower depth. 
it causes them to do a quick acceleration to the top, almost like a helicopter, and you have one second to respond before they're lost under your boat. My left light, I can dip in. I can see it. On a clear night, this orb of light might be 15 to 18 foot across. If it's murkier, it'll be a lot less. The center light, I don't really see because it's so far down to the bottom. So my right light and left light were actually pretty close together and I do not create a lot of dark water between them. The only reason I know I have a sacrificial light, meaning I'm sacrificing it because I can't dip off it, it's down too far, is I have a cord attached to my battery. If this isn't producing, in an hour and a half, I will retire this center light and go back to a two light set and close my circles and overlap them. But when the big ones are running, and I'm on the west side of the channel in Oak Hill, for example, near a claim farm, I will always try the three set first and see if this center light yields and blows to the top the bigger shrimp. Otherwise, I pull it, I close things up, and go back into an overlapping two set configuration. Again, this is a strategy for tidal water. The last diagram in this series is a little bit of my obsessive compulsive nature. Let's break this down because this does look a little gnarly. On the left is my calculated depth, depth minus eight. That is my left light set. Depth minus eight is my right sided deployment. The faded circle is my sacrificial light that's about a foot off the bottom. I have a 10 foot pipe that I pipe out from my back of my boat. My engine is here. Why do I do that? A frame net is wonderful when it is not interfered with by the lights you have out in front. One way to ensure that my light does not on a 17 foot flats boat center console here. I drive out a 10 foot pipe and I clip on my frame net. These dipping lights do not interfere at all with how my frame net is performing. Actually, sometimes when they want to run the edge, it drives them right into my frame net that's sitting in total blackness but I'm also known to be the girl seeking advantages. Sometimes I will frame out this net by throwing a fourth light, creating goal posts for just the frame net. I will open them wide enough so that I can steer the shrimp and herd them into my frame net. If you are gonna get this complex, Make sure you have some form of spotlight where you can actually see how things are going. Are they missing the net? Are they diving before the opening? Are they flipping out, snapping and freaking and skittish? Or are they going straight in like missiles? This is a very complicated set. It takes time. Nothing is worse when I have one, two, three, four lights out, a frame net, and two anchors, and I see a barge. Ugh, that's a nightmare. Do you need to do all of this strategy? It depends how OCD you are. It's worth a shot, it's worth a try. It just depends. Do you need a sacrificial light? Well, do you want the advantage? Do you want to draw up some of the bigger shrimp from, let's say, Oak Hill? Is it worth a shot? It is. 
you're only out time. Use any old light, but never mix fluorescence with halogens or incandescence with LED. Otherwise, you've lost control of where your light is beaming. The last thing you want to do is bounce the shrimp around like a pinball machine. So all of your lights in your dipping area must be in the same LED pattern that emits the same cone of light. Again, this is sacrificial. You can't see it from your boat. But what you can see are the shrimp doing a rapid ascension to the top of the water. Join me, Captain Lee Noga, on Facebook, Florida Shrimping Academy Tips and Tricks. For all your gear needs, lights and nets, a shipping company that I trust, marker69.com. That's where I get my gear.